Right? Oh. Jesus Christ. Damn. Oh. Feel good? <laughs> kind of nervous. Perfect. I got you. Just, hey, no, no back questions. Maybe you look skinny though, bro. <laughs> Toast Light Podcast. A little different today, a little out of our studio, out of our comfort zone because we're doing this in front of a lot of people that don't give two fucks about us. But again, we feel like all the eyes are on us because we have a camera out in public. But we're just, we're just, we're just with the tripod, but we're just making it happen. So let's do this. All right. Which was first? So we're doing things a little bit differently for this question, your first question, because that, what? that question, uh huh, it's a little bit different. We always do, I'm like, we always start off serious. Let's start off with something a little bit lighthearted. Tell the story of the most embarrassing moment of your life. Oh, All right. <laughs> so for the longest time, I never suffered from being lactose intolerant. <laughs> never in my life. One time we went to Guanajuato, <laughs> went to Mexico, Guanajuato. And again, we're already in Mexico for a couple of days, having fun. But for the people that know, the milk that's in Mexico, the water in Mexico, it's a little <laughs> different than the one out here. So we went to breakfast the first day in Guanajuato. We got there. I'm a big fan of chilaquiles. And this is where, oh, pónganle, oh, con todo bien? Perfecto. Got the arrachera with it, the cheese. Oh, estamos al tiro. Had a good breakfast. Vámonos por el día. It wasn't. So we went to a tour. I was like, damn, my stomach kind of hurts. I was like, nah, I'm good. And the tour kept going, and I'm like, ah, man, it's gonna, it's gonna be bad. I feel it right. I was like, ah, oh, the hotel's right in the middle. We'll be good. Vario, verga. Tour got back, I started running to the hotel. My boy, as much as I, I tried to squeeze and make it, it was not working. It's one of those things where you had to shower right after. So you shat yourself. <laughs> yeah, literally. That's when I realized that one, I'm lactose intolerant. And after that, I never wanted to try it out one more time. So now, when I order my chilaquiles, no queso, no crema, I don't give a hell what you guys got to say. That shit was, no, never. So Mexico changed my life. Literally. For the better. <laughs> I don't know for the better. Because when I order chilaquiles or nothing on it, they look at me weird. So, back to our regular <laughs> scheduled programming. <laughs> Mind fuck. Uh, what is your biggest fear? Damn, that's crazy. What is your biggest fear? I think my biggest fear is uh, just, I guess, just leaving this earth without making the people that I care the most about proud. I think. Uh, Growing up, it was always making my dad proud, right? Because that's the one person that you kind of want to always hear is proud of. But the more and more that I grow, um, I think it's just making myself proud now that I think it's my ultimate goal in life. I can't put uh, not feeling good enough on anybody else other than myself. So I think that's honestly my biggest fear, leaving this world without making myself proud more than anyone else all right let's do it got mind foot what is one life goal you hope to achieve before before passing away um i feel like the the main goal that i want to do is retire my parents and that is either of working my ass off in a nine to five that is succeeding in my business that is um doing what i have to do i really want to retire my parents because they've 
came here with nothing and the sacrifices they they made for me and my little brother for us to be in the best position that we can mm. i i just want to see them not lift a finger and i feel like once i'm able to do that i feel like i'll can, i can die happy i could i could say i've done my job as a son and i've done my job in fulfilling my life goals because I, I never said it today but like I, it's i work for you guys like you guys are a reflection like you your hard work has put me in a in a mindset of i work for you and i want to retire you you should have the best life what do you think your parents' goal is for you or what what have they always wished for for like for you they they shift their mindset at first they wanted me to work hard get a good job and for that too to help out you know but now that they saw me go through the struggle go through hard labor go through what they were going through they just saw the shift that i made from quitting my 9 to 5 and doing my business doing what i love yeah. and now um they want they want me to be happy and they see that i'm happy and they see that i'm i'm able to take care of myself and they just want to, at the end of the day now they want to see me happy and i that fills my heart with joy because before it wasn't like that and i'm i'm just glad that they got to change their mind and i got to see it when i'm an adult now and it's it's a good feeling because they didn't get to do that and i have the opportunity to be happy and hopefully retire them what do you think was the mindset that your parents had when they came and like their american dream compared to what yours is now oh man they they just need to survive like my mom came out of four sisters she was the first one here had nothing she she was the first one here like she was sending money she was uh working at a lanchetta illegal uh, uh illegal um, Ill illegally right she was just trying to put food on the table like they just wanted to survive and that hunger just it's you can't beat that you know yeah. like I, the, I, I'm, I look up to them like they're my heroes what's the amount of money that you think you need to have in order for not just you to be happy for your parents to be happy is there a price on it or what is that there there's no price tag in and seeing them smile mm -hmm. there's no price tag in them being content and enjoying life i feel like they've been working for for their happiness but they haven't enjoyed it yet mm. there you go pop What's one experience that changed your life? Hmm. Can it be like real? It has to be real deep? As deep as you want, brother. Well, I might get emotional though. Perfect. One question, well, one experience in my life that really, really, really did change my life was the passing of my best friend from cancer. Uh, you know, you realize when, you know, you have someone really close to you, you never know what's the value of life. But once you realize that that one person that's there for you, you you should enjoy every single moment in life they have. Because that now led me to an amazing woman that I call my fiance now. Because now, like you know, we both went through the same trauma, you now of losing people. So. If anybody out there like listening to this, value life, value every single moment, love family, love life, you know, have fun, but work towards your goals and really, really be there for every single family member, no matter how where. Did, uh, how did losing your best friend affect I you? I lost them through cancer. How did it affect how you? How did it affect you? It got me in a state where I was depressed every single day, you know. It affected my everyday life, you know. It it brought me downhill, you know. Yeah. I was at a place where my life was perfectly, you know. I was working two jobs, taking care of my family. So it really showed me the value of life. Have you think you've healed from the loss of your best friend? How was the question? Have you think you've healed from the loss of your best oh, friend? I haven't. I haven't healed because you know, Cinco de Mayo, I know it's an important important holiday for certain people. For me, it's a reflection of life and where I've been. 
So you know, come come Sunday, you know, I I take the time to really be there for the loved ones, you know, reflect on life and where I am now, the point of my life, you know, it's it takes a lot for someone to admit that. Mm, how do I say this? That we made mistakes in life. That we weren't there for the persons, the people that we really want to be there for. Yeah. But, like I said, value every single moment in life. Value every single second because you never know what we go through. You know? And like, that's fate, has it, you know? I met you today. Yeah. You know, at a brewery. <laughs> like I said, you know, and I would never ever take, be the person to be walk in front of a camera to like talk about this. Uh, I appreciate but, that. You know, be, uh, wake up every morning and really enjoy life and really think about every single thing you've been through. Because no matter what life throws at us, you have to be, you have to fucking, you have to be happy. And you know, you know that yeah. the other day, there's certain people who are not gonna wake up tomorrow. Yeah. You know. Appreciate and you. Every day, like life testing us, man. Yeah. You if you could change one aspect of your life, what would it be? One aspect I would change is, I think, trying to do so many things at once. That's like one of my biggest aspects that I, I feel like I overwhelm myself sometimes, trying to have so many projects, trying to finish everything when you gotta put yourself like priorities of what project comes first before Moving on to like three, four, that's kind of like one aspect that I feel like in my life I, I, I need to try to change. Do you feel like you get involved in so many things because you're trying to prove it, not to other people, but to yourself that you're able to do all this? Yeah, I, I think it's, yeah, it's to myself, you know, always trying to make it, make something better than where you came from mm. that's kind of like where I, I try to like what keeps me going uh not trying to fall back in the steps that i was in prior yeah so just keep pushing you know Facts. but it's, yeah all right we're going to mind fuck all right here we go now it's serious what's something you wish you would have said to someone hey I know before I used to live, I used to have a lot of regrets, like keeping my mouth shut, not saying I love you, not telling people how I feel or what I think of them, like with the most purest of my heart. So before, I wish I would have told like my uncle that passed away, I love you, my best friend that passed away, that I was there for him. And, and I, I, it's not that I wasn't telling him this, but it was just, I didn't tell him as often. Um, Man, I think that's just what kills all the time. Like the, I wish. And even though now I change this, like I tell everybody I love them. I tell my people I'm there for them and I'll always be there for them. But the one thing that always kills is not being able to tell my, lot, my loved ones that are not here anymore how much I, how much I needed them and how much I love them. So, man, like for those people that honestly, like the regret is what kills. The regret is and the wishes, like, I wish I would have told you this that when you were here. Is there one that you regret the most not saying something to a to specific my, person? To my uncle. You know, unfortunately, my uncle passed away back in, in like 2015. And I think that's just the one that kills the most because I was so caught up in life, I was so caught up in being a young 18, 18, 19 year old, just trying to party, be with people that honestly are not even around anymore. And um, I wish I would have, I would have said more, more I love yous, more how are you? Like trying to understand a little bit more, but Unfortunately, we can't replay time. We can't go back in time and, you know, 
I will always live with that regret and with that pain in my heart every now and then. But, you know, I'm trying to do my thing now where we talked about it before. You know, sometimes you have those dreams of people that that uh, have passed away and they visit you. And when I see them, I'm like, man, I miss you. I love you. <laughs> Hug them like nothing changed. And then you wake up and you're just trying to go back into that dream. And, you know, unfortunately, that sometimes you don't remember those type of dreams that were so good and so, so real. But we've... Yeah, it's just... Don't live in regret, to be honest. And if you have those dreams with those people that have passed away, hold them as tight as you can and take them for the memories and for the moments. Yeah, that was a good one. Vulnerable. Dude, what the hell? Are you content with your life? Define content, because if content is just being okay with life, then yeah, I'm okay with it, right? If your definition of content is, am I happy with my life right now? I can't say that I am. I think uh, life just keeps taking turns that I wasn't ready for. Um, we've talked about it in previous pods where I mentioned uh, me losing my job. And I think um, that just kind of messed with my mental and it just keeps messing with my mental. Before I used to have something to look forward to, as sad as it sounds, it was going to work. But now it's just like, what is my purpose every day? What do I wake up for every single day? Before I used to have a, a routine. And so, yeah, I was happy with my life back then, right? Steady income, it paid well. Um, I had my schedule. I love my schedule. But now it's just like, what do I do? I feel like I'm so lost. I don't really, I can't say that I'm happy. I can't say that I'm sad. I don't know what I am right now. It's like, I'm just, just living every single day. It's just going to waking up and going to sleep and doing the same thing over and over and over again. All right, intimacy. How can you tell when you have fallen out of love? Damn. Um, this one's hard. I feel like I'm a hopeless romantic. I feel like I, I'm a Pisces. I don't know if you guys know <laughs> the zodiac signs, but I, um, I feel a lot. Like my emotions are heightened and I feel like falling out of love is you're able to move on without thinking of the other person whether that's a relationship or um, a friendship I feel like I haven't fallen out of love with the current situation that I'm in with my friendships and my and the people around me so it's kind of hard to answer this but I feel like the feelings that I'm feeling, I know I can't move on with life without thinking about them. Man. So I feel like that's the, when you know you're falling out of love when you're able to do things without having them in the back of your mind. Mm. So falling out of love, it's, it doesn't hurt you to see them moving on or with somebody else. I feel like as cliche as it sounds, love hurts. Okay. And at the end of the day, if you truly love somebody, you're going to want to see them happy aside from your own happiness. So if that happiness happens to be with somebody else, with something else, then I'm okay with that. I still love that person for them to move on and to find their happiness. If it wasn't with me, hey, that, that's cool too. But I feel like true love, if you want, true love is seeing the other partner be happy with, aside from your happiness. Mm. Three questions, brother. Three Dang. questions. <laughs> Watch the last right. What was the lowest point of your life and how did you overcome it? Sheesh. This one this one cuts deep. Um, I mean I've hit rock bottom. I mean, you know, it's it's kind of 
where where kind of like right now my transformation from hitting the rock bottom of like the dark path that I was in uh, constantly like drinking partying all of that stuff uh, pretty much wasting a lot of my my time into a lot of that aspect and uh, thank God I'm, I'm I saw the light and I, I came out uh, what saved you my mom my girl um, it's mostly like you know that that relationship you have with with those certain people that are always like gonna be by your side those that's like the main ones that hit me and i was just like damn what am i doing bro this is not it's not me you know it's not me i gotta there's more to life than just what i'm doing right now and that's kind of how like I, I I started what I'm doing right now, which is my my brand, which is Reborn LA, kind of pushing that message of change, you know? Yeah. Changing within yourself is like the biggest aspect because you gotta accept the change in order to make things happen. Mm. So there it is. Who is that one person that has consistently been there for you? That's the one that got me crying. Play the sad, play the sad music. Um, the person that has been there for me consistently every day, through the good, through my bad, through my highs and my lows, has been my mom, bro. Like that woman has seen me from being a young, dumb teenager to being a uh, older dumb adult making dumb decisions and always have the best in heart but the one thing that she has always done is when i was down and out and i felt like everybody quit on me and everybody had left me there to be alone like she never gave up on me and even as much as i pushed her away as much as i pushed everybody away and no one will ever understand like my mom became my best friend like She's like, I don't know what's wrong, mijo, but I got you. I love you. And yeah, and she seen me through my worst. And that's why I always say, like, protect your mom no matter what happened, no matter situation, the day, the time, who you're around. Your mom is your mom. Respect them, love them, take care of them. Because, mal, como dicen, madre sola hay una. Y eso nunca se va, se va a replicar. It's only one mother in your world, in your life. And if you, and if you have a, a blessing of life to have them in flesh. Take advantage, cause how you time time passes, people get older, and, and I don't want to ever live with that regret of not taking care of my mom or telling my mom how much she means to me and I love her. You know. So what do you think would happen, or what do you think happens once your mom is gone? Who do you rely on after that? If the one person you've relied on your entire life is your mom and she leaves this earth, who do you have? Man, to be quite frank, I'll be lost. Who, who are you gonna rely on? That's a mother's love. There's nothing like it, no one like it. You know, and and they say like, you try to find your mother's love in, in your partner, right? Your partner can have similar traits, similar styles and probably the, the next type of love that may be similar, but honestly, like without my mom, like I wouldn't even know what life would look like. It wouldn't be the same at all. And, and, and I've lost people in my life, you know, grandparents, friends, uncles, but yeah, and life without my mom would take me with you at that point, you know, just, Moms are moms, bro. Love them. Hey. Mama, I love you. Hey. It's hard because we want to, I want to like uh, talk about it. <laughs> like after, like, right? Like a pod. Intimacy. 
how is your relationship with your parents? Uh, my relationship with my mom has always been great. Like, I can't say that it's ever been bad. Even when we uh, have a little, a little disagreement, uh, 20 seconds later, we're back to normal. Uh, my mom's been my best friend pretty much my whole life, other than my sister. So uh, that's the one person that I could never be upset with. So my relationship with my mom is, is freaking fantastic. The relationship with my dad, however, there really is no relationship. As sad as it sounds, it's there was never any type of like relationship growing up because he was always busy or I was always busy. So um, we never got a chance to like actually talk and build any type of relationship. So I think uh, that's where I'm kind of trying to work on right now because obviously he's getting older, I'm getting older. Every day that passes, it's one day less than I'm gonna have a chance to uh, build some type of relationship. You think the time is wasted? Yeah, I think uh, time is being wasted right now. I wasted a lot of time resenting him, I think, for not being there. And um, I think now it's just the ball's in my court. As sad as it sounds, it's my choice to not have a relationship now and I feel like I'm messing up. Like straight up, I feel like every single day that passes, I'm missing an opportunity. And um, I'm trying though, I'm trying to build it. But we'll see, I mean, hopefully, hopefully I can build some type of relationship. That way, whenever he's gone, I don't look back as, Oh, just season. Okay. All right. This is a good one. This I got. This is gonna be a good it's one. Good. This is the most non-emotional motherfucker we have on the team. But I got you. Vulnerable. <laughs> What's an apology you, you never got to give? Damn. Listen, I, I took like maybe a sip of beer, <laughs> so you're not, you don't have my emotional side yet, but um, an apology is two ways to go about it. Um, I'm not going to say to who, but it's two people in mind. Um, I would say I got into a really, really bad fight with one of this person, with one of these people. Um, if you're watching this, I just I just want to say I'm sorry that you've given everything for to me and all the pain that I've brought to you. It it wasn't intentional, you know. Um, it's an apology that's going to last a, li last a lifetime because I feel like it's uh, it's something that I blame to myself, you know. And the other apology is to, I would say my parents, just because they saw me go through a pretty dark time that Jusco knows about, and then uh, Pepe knows about, about um, just going through dark times, and I just wasn't mentally there. I wasn't supportive of them as well. I was just checked out. So I feel like my mom watches this. So <laughs> mom, I love you. Uh, I'm sorry that I'm, I'm emotionless sometimes, you know, but. Just know I love you. Do you think you have forgiven yourself for hurting that person? I don't think I'll ever do that. It's just, like I said, it goes back to the love thing. It's uh, as long as the other person's happy, I, to me, it's just, I, I'll cheer for you from afar and I'll, I'll be happy from afar. But I don't think I'll ever forgive myself for that. But that's just like, that's something I'm working on <laughs> to get over. Do you, do you think you and your life, you thrive in pain and when you go through a situation that brings you pain? As cliche as it sounds, yeah. Like I, I feel like with discomfort, it, discomfort and pain, it just pushes me to be better as a person, pushes me to, to thrive, you know? Yeah. It gives me that drive. Like I love being happy. I, sometimes I'm happy and I play some depressing music, but I just like 
that drive, that pain of like, all right. And then obviously I think about the same things over and over again. Um, but I feel like pain's a good motivator. I know you didn't get this question, but honestly, can you say, do you love yourself? Or on a scale of one to 10? Uh, I can't say I love myself. I'll put it at a five. I feel like there's improvements. I feel like I need to find that joy, but I'm constantly seeking it. Um, that's why it's called pursuit of happiness. You're always on the pursuit. You're never gonna be content with happy, being happy, but you're always pursuing. So I feel like constantly pursuing happiness, constantly pursuing loving myself, that's gonna keep me going, you know? Uh, all right, last one. Jeez. Jeez, we hit you with it. All right, hey, you picked this one? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> all right, all right. Do you feel like you're on the right, on the track in, wait, 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 hold on. Do you feel like you're on the track in life? Damn, I just drank a little bit. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I'm very ambitious. I feel like I'm not to where I want to be, but I feel like I'm kind of on the, in the path, you know? I'm be. in that marathon. Mm. Yeah, so I'm, I'm in that marathon. I'm not trying to get to the finish line quite yet because I know it's not where I want to be, you know? So where do you want to be? Where I want to be is, I want to be able to, provide for my family um, and being having that flexibility of time you know time is a big big thing for a lot of people that we take time for granted yeah. you know take time for granted and it's a lot of people don't understand why you're doing a lot of the stuff you do and it's it's more of like you know there's a reason why you're doing a lot of the stuff you do and that that track in life is kind of there's a lot of roadblocks that you hit that you have to try to figure out sometimes you're like shit you know like i can't I, what do i do now you know i'm stuck my car's broke down you know <laughs> um yeah, but there's always ways around it, you know. Um, fix it, and get back. Fix it, break, get back up. You know, it's it's happened to everyone. You know, you can't drown yourself in a glass of water. You know, you gotta you gotta swim. You know. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah, bro. See, that wasn't too bad. Appreciate you, man. Nah, Hell yeah. Man. Sheesh. I didn't want to get too deep into uh, it. <laughs> I'm sweating. That's it. I'm done. Mueve tal, mueve tal, erga pa' yendo.